What's going on, Bucks fans? Rachel West and Rick Stroud back with you, getting ready for the Bucks to take on the Arizona Cardinals over there on Christmas Day. Um, before we get to the matchup, though, Rick, let's start with all of the injuries that the Bucks got. They've got a lot of them. <laughs> but the good news is that they do have a big piece coming back Sunday in Tristan Wirfs. However, they're still going to be down to tackle on that O-line. Yeah, it's, it's difficult because, you know, Tristan had missed uh, three games with the high ankle sprain, and he is back. But Donovan Smith is going to miss this game with a foot injury, and he has struggled uh, the last couple weeks. We've seen a couple touchdowns come off the board with holding penalties. So it looks like Josh Wells, who had been playing right tackle for Tristan, will move over to the left side. But that's really not all the injuries. I mean, they're going to be without Vita Vea, a big part of their – uh, their defensive line, obviously, with the, with a calf injury, they don't have Jamel Dean again, who's who's you know trying to come back from the the broken toe. Um, you know, as safety, we'll have to see if Antoine Winfield can play. Uh, so there's a number of guys that are going to miss this game. Carl Nassib as well, and uh, I think more on defense. But you know, uh, getting Tristan Wirfs back is big. Not having Donovan Smith, we're going to find out just how much they really miss him because a lot of fans are upset with him to begin with. Yeah, Tom Brady was talking the other day. When they don't have Tristan out there, everybody notices. So mm -hmm. definitely will be good to get him back up on that line. Um, and then last week against the Bengals, obviously that second half. Fluky third quarter there, just one bad thing after the next. Um, but the first half, there are some positives to take mm -hmm. away from that. So just how much positive can they take away from that going into this week and carry that over? Yeah, you know, I, I think there's a lot that they did that was interesting. And the biggest thing was play action passing. Tom Brady used a lot of play action passing in that first half. He was very accurate. About 46% of the time they, they used a, a fake handoff and got the ball down the field. And I think, you know, in talking to Bruce Arians uh, earlier this week, he said he thought Byron Leftwich really just said, I'm going to go back to what I know. I'm going to go back to attacking down the field. So I think that's something you can look for against the Cardinals. Um, the difference might have been that I think Tom Brady was very secure in the protection. Cincinnati didn't have Trey Hendrickson. They didn't have their best pass rush. They're not a big pass rush team. Cardinals are a little better in that area. But uh, if they can carry that the way they played over in the first half, they were dominant. You know, they were headed towards a 34-35 point game. And that was their average, you know, over 30 points last year. So I think it is something they can build on, but they got to go out and execute. Right. They looked like the old Bucks team that everyone knew and loved. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so we'll see if they are able to do that. Um, as we mentioned, going up against the Cardinals, who at first glance, they don't have Kyler Murray. You might think, yeah. oh, yay, like that's exciting. Good for yeah. the Bucks. Trace McSorley going to be in for him. But really the talk this week with all the players, coaches, is it doesn't really matter who's back there at quarterback. They still got the same offensive scheme. Well, we've certainly seen the Bucks struggle against young quarterbacks, rookie quarterbacks making their first start, uh, you know, backup quarterbacks. It doesn't seem to matter. And Trace McSorley can run this offense. It's an offense that, that features a mobile quarterback. He has good wheels. Uh, he is making his first start against Tom Brady, which we saw in San Francisco a couple weeks ago. A young quarterback do that. Uh, but they also have some good weapons. I mean, Don, DeAndre Hopkins is one of the elite receivers in this league. Now, Carlton Davis did really well against Jamar Chase. He proves that uh, when he's locked up against the elite receivers, he can really produce. So uh, make no mistake, uh, McSorley's been in the league a little bit, played a little bit in Baltimore, is familiar with this scheme. So. Uh, it'll be another challenge for their defense, especially with all the missing pieces. Yeah, let's hope uh, this debut goes a little better <laughs> than the Brock Purdy one did. Yeah. Um, and of course, as we said, this game is on Christmas. It's the first time the Bucks are ever playing a game on Christmas. Yeah. So just what is that like for them? Well, they're leaving on Friday, and so they got an early start out there when they go out to the west uh, side of the, of the United States. But it's difficult. You know, these guys have children, too. Uh, they have wives, some of them young children, uh, and the Bucks have never played on Christmas, which is, you know, it's common in the NBA, not as common in the NFL, but it fell on a Sunday. They have a Sunday night game on top of that, so they got to wait around all day. So it's going to be a little difficult for some of them, but uh, in this business, the, the wives, the families all understand what, what is, comes first, and I think the game is so important um, that their focus will be on winning this game. They've got a chance to win the NFC South, unbelievably still one game lead. And if they can win this game, they have a chance maybe, depending on what happens Sunday, to clinch next week here at Raymond James against Carolina. So a lot at stake still for the Bucks. A win would certainly be a nice little Christmas gift for sure. them all out there. Well, be sure you guys are keeping up with all of our Bucks coverage that we have for you leading up to the game over on social media at Sports by Tampa Bay Times as well as over at TampaBay.com.